send you a screenshot of all I can see. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the target up with some tagging cream. How you doing guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, me and James, the other SCM here, we've got some servers to rack, so we're gonna give you a quick guide on how to safely and correctly rack mount your servers, switches, etc. I've got my cage nuts because they're of vital importance. I've got a few network cables to connect them up. I've got my screwdriver. So we're gonna go in, I'm just gonna grab some ear protection because it's loud and we need to protect our ears. So we're gonna go in, get them rack mounted, and we'll talk you through it. All right, James, how you doing? Right, we're uh, mounting these up. This is James, the other SDM at Custodian. We work together making the uh, ship sail. So we're gonna be mounting these three servers, some new internal servers that we're gonna deploy. Um, yeah, we're gonna mount them in this rack. We're gonna mount them above here. Got some switches in. Um, yeah, we're gonna show you how it's done. Okay, so the plan then. Yep. Uh, if we remove the blanking, then we'll probably just do it to you above the 6500. Yep. And then just mount each server on the top. Yep. Um, do the rails first. When I'm going to go around the back, put the rails at the back. Yep. Okay. Go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Right, do you want to run around the back? Hello! So, as we just discussed, uh, we're going to put the rails in first so that they're in place and we know they're in the correct position. We're going to go to you above the 6500. Um, then we're going to mount the servers in, we'll get them connected up and see what happens. Power them on and hopefully everything works. So what I'm checking here is, I don't know if you can see it, but on the servers, on the rails, sorry, it's actually labelled where they go. So this is front right, which is the same as the one we've just put in. So these rails, you push them in and this clip actually locks onto the onto the um, the post and then you push it to release so this is the front right one so I will connect this end and James will connect that end which conveniently says rear right so we'll get that connected up this one so this is the left rail yep. and of course we're wearing gloves because there's sharp bits on these rails we don't want to cut ourselves and because they're rubber, it also gives us a bit more grip, especially when lifting the servers. What one are we going for? This one? Just a quick check to make sure that they're secured and that any sort of weight on them isn't going to make them fall out. We've had incidents where the rails haven't been properly clipped in. You go to put the server in and the rails collapse, which is not good, um, especially if you're not wearing steel toe caps. We're ready to mount the servers, we've got the rails in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick like, discussion about how we're going to mount them. Because the last thing we want to do is rush it or miss we something. And... Each other. That would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. we don't want to hurt one another. Um, otherwise we've all got to do more shifts, so no one wants that. So we'll, we'll have a quick talk through, we'll extend the rails, we'll get the servers mounted, push them in and then we'll just do the other two real quick. Um, just so they're in and we can carry on with the, the how-to. Okay, right, how are we doing this? Okay, so Bottom top one. one, we'll pull the rails out first. Yeah. So just a side And then we're going. And I'll, I'll take the length, yep. the line by length, and then we'll just discuss that we've actually got both sides in first. And then slowly push in. Slow and steady. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to line the rails up. So you've got the server rails and the rack rails. Alright, so side's in. We've just confirmed that James's side is in over there. My side is in over here, so now we can safely start pushing it back. It's literally that, but sometimes they're mounted incorrectly and it doesn't quite sit in a safe position. So the levers, we pull the levers and it unlocks the server, and then we can pull it out. Say if we push it back, it should lock back in again. When you pull it, it should come out. If it does come out, you might need to realign. Yep. 
So you might not hear it on the microphone that I'm wearing, but when you push it in, you can hear the rails lock. So when you actually pull the server out, you can pull it out and it won't just fall off the end. It actually stops. What's happening is along here, there's little locking clips. As you're putting the server in, you can actually hear them engaging. Um, so just a little side note there. It is worth noting though that not all rails have that feature. Nope, nope, that's so true. when you pull them out. Yeah. Like yeah, some rails don't have the locks and will just freely fly out uh, at their own will. So, yeah. <laughs> just be careful. But yeah, that's those three mounted. Okay, should we do the switch next? Yep, we'll do the switch. Yeah. All right. So, we're yeah. going to do some cage nuts. Yeah, cage nuts. Um, we'll just um, stick it in U35. Yep, front or rear. And um, we'll do it at the front because this switch in particular is airflow is front to back. Cool. So, sucking in cold air front blowing it out the back so if we stuck it in the back that would be bad yep and then we'll be heating up <laughs> the switch more than it needs to be we're all about airflow yep so. cool so what we're going to do now is we're going to mount the switch now the thing about the switch it doesn't sit on rails it's mounted by what's called the ears which are this this little bit on the side of the switch so if i show you the switch real quick so this switch we're actually going to screw these into the rack but to do that, we need to put what's called cage nuts in. Because these are literally just holes, what a cage nut does is it actually gives us a thread and a screw. So I'm just gonna quickly open this and put them in. So I'm gonna go and use 35 here. So they just pop in like so. And I'm wearing gloves because sometimes you slip and I know firsthand when you slip and this little bit goes under your thumbnail it hurts for weeks so gloves for safety so there we're in what we're going to do is James and I we're going to lift the switch hold it in place put the screws in um, I'll keep one hand without a glove one hand with the hand with the glove will support it and give me a bit more grip on the base of the switch and this hand because the screws are really fiddly with gloves. If I can get it open. And as James mentioned earlier, the reason we're mounting this at the front of the rack is because of the way the fans work. They work the same as the server, so they pull in from the front and out at the back, so the hot air gets thrown out the back. And we don't want that getting thrown into the cold aisle, because that ruins our aisle containment. Okay, so we just get this mounted. We're just going to put it in place, and I'm just going to put two screws in for now, just to kind of support the it. First, and then we can let go. Going at the bottom. Oh, we put a camera there. So now, because we've done the bottom once, we can let go of the switch. We've not have to yep. hold it for a very long time. Yep. And surprisingly, they are heavy. So we could just go and put the other two in. And then James can tighten them up because he's stronger than I am. While James is doing that, it's also worth noting when mounting your equipment, not every rack has the U numbers. Sometimes the middle um, hole in a U is denoted with a little dot, um, normally punched into the rail, so that's how you know where your U's are, um, if it isn't numbered, otherwise you've got to count. So now that's all mounted, we can now go around the back, connect everything up, and see what happens. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the power to the devices first, making sure that we have an A and a B feed connected, so A for your power supply one and B for your power supply two. The idea in that being that if one, we lose one feed, the server stays on and all your kit stays on. And then when the feed comes back, then the load will transfer back to the other feed again. So they actually balance with two power supplies on. You get like a one amp pour on either side. If you lose one side, you then go like two amps on one feed. So you get a nice balance when doing this as well. So what we've got, 
is if you notice we've actually got different colored power bars so our A in this case is gray and our B in this case is blue and we've actually got different colored power cables as well so we're going to make our A orange and our B black so that and any ra random engineer that comes in he can easily differentiate between the two feeds so what Ash is going to do for me is he's going to connect up the switch if you notice our switch also has two power supplies in it some switches like the switch above only has one in which case you can connect additional power supplies to them but make sure these ones stay on these ones actually have two so our A's go on the left <laughs> okay. I knew we should have bought that airbrush. Yes, thank you. Okay, at some point we are going to actually grab some Velcro and attach these to the cable trays that we have on the side to keep them neat so they don't get in the way. And then it's good to also try and keep your power cables and your network cables slightly separate. Makes it easier for the engineer that comes to disconnect your cable to find it again. Right, so what we'll do, same kind of A and B principle, or if you're gonna be joining them together, then it doesn't matter. Two different colors for each port. You wanna take the red? I'll take the red pill. Okay, cool. So the last thing we're going to do is add the blanking back into the rack because it's quite important we keep the airflow correct inside the rack and making sure that the hot and cold aisles are as separate as possible. Otherwise we kind of d diminish our efficiency a little bit. So these ones are nice and easy to put in because you just push them in onto the rack. You can get rack mount ones that you're screwing in as well. They're quite nice as well. So now that just stops the hot and the cold air mixing. And when you've got lots of servers in your rack you get quite a bit of pressure and the hot air will try to move to the front where it's cold and we don't want that otherwise you'll start getting a circulation of air where your air servers start putting in hot air again so it's quite important we keep it as blanked off as possible okay so me and Ash are going to finish up cabling the back of the rack now what we're going to do is we're going to get some velcro we're going to tie the cables in neatly we're going to label them up so we know what they are when we come back in six months time and uh, make sure all the power cables are connected correctly as well. Um, so thank you for watching our video on racking these servers and switches. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got any comments and questions, leave them below in the comments and we'll have a look at them for you. Um, continue to subscribe and uh, join us back for the next video. Ash, thumbs up.